Trading the foreign exchange market carries high risk and may not be suitable for all investors trading on margin. Utilizing leverage can carry even higher level of risk and can lead to a complete loss of investment funds. So before deciding to trade the foreign exchange market or using any of our software alert products, you should carefully and diligently consider your personal investment objectives, level of experience, and risk tolerance. There is a possibility that you could potentially sustain significant loss. You should not invest any capital or trade that you cannot afford to lose. It is your responsibility to be aware of and understand all risks associated with foreign exchange trading and to seek professional advice from an independent certified financial advisor if you have any doubts. Avoria Prime does not exercise trading authority over your trades. You and you alone exercise discretionary trading authority over every trade. So welcome everyone to the 6th of April. My name is Steve Vetteral. I am the firm CMA, the risk manager. Welcome to our midweek software strategy session. Let's start our analysis. We're looking at, uh, let's just do a quick refresh here. Get a lot of questions on Forex Factory and if you click on this little, it looks like a megaphone, this little green megaphone, you can unclick, because I only care about red folder events, okay? So this is forexfactory.com. There's lots of them out there like this. I've used this calendar for over a decade now. It has only failed me once. <laughs> so it's pretty accurate on the information. Um, Today's Tuesday, April 6th, so we've got nothing going on. All systems should be going trading. Hopefully, they are all out and trading well. Um, I have the um, FOMC meetings. Looks like it's scheduled tomorrow. Typically, this is a release, as you guys can see. Um, they talk a lot about hawkish versus dovish, okay? <clears throat> so just know that hawkish is... Um, you know, it expected is, you know, essentially they're wanting to do quantitative easing, right? Whereas dovish would be more of, you know, we're looking to pull back assets or stop quantitative easing, essentially pulling currency um, and bonds from the marketplace in the terms of repurchase agreements. So, <clears throat> so forth. But you can always click on the folder, see what it is. If you have any questions, the Q&A window is open. Really have much to say other than I probably would not be trading around this or accepting trades. Now keep in mind the times here are going to be different than your time, so make sure you're cognizant of this. Will automatically change depending on. See if you could switch this over to 10 a.m. <clears throat> see it'll save the settings. Okay, and then I can synchronize it to 10. See how the time changes right here, and then just go back and do a refresh or click back on your bookmark you'll see the time change, right? <clears throat> so this employment, um, which is really early typically on, on Canadian releases of, of, of stuff, I would not have any accepting any trades around this. Anything has to do, especially since CAD and Canadian dollar in relation to most other currencies has been on the lift. And in many cases, it's a big time lift, especially relative to stuff like the Swiss um, and some other currencies that it's been on an absolute tear straight up on. So we'll go, we'll cover that a little bit today, but just be cognizant of that. Let's jump into the markets. Those trading equities or those having some sort of 401k or retirement portfolio that is heavy um, to a certain degree, or maybe 100% in equities, we've had a lift and a breakout um, from almost all markets with the exception of the NASDAQ. Okay. You can see that we're still in a non-breakout territory. Typically the NASDAQ is a leading market because it is loaded with tech stocks and a lot of other high performance type of industry stuff, especially in biotech. Um, and it is lagging the broad index, okay? SAP is a register of 500 companies in terms of capitalization. So I always suggest paying attention to that more so than you would the Dow, right? Which is 30 stocks that are price weighted. It is an inefficient index. The S&P is much better. So as we have been selling as a firm for our clients into this strength, uh, some people have been buying the breakout. Call us wrong, call us you know, not looking to continue to buy into this bubblicious looking equity uh, markets. Uh, that's where we stand. So looking at the bonds and relative to currencies, notice from our big old decline starting towards the beginning of February all the way down into now, we've begun to settle out. This is a daily chart. Each candle represents a single day. This is the seven to 10 year right here. Okay, let's take a look also at 
The longer term one, 20 year, we've stabilized for now. Doesn't necessarily mean that this is going to affect currencies prices one way or the other, but I do think it's important to take a look at what's going on with bonds right now. We are in what is about a two week stabilization of a tight range and notice just, I'll see if I can make this bigger for you guys to see, but notice we have just gone into uh, the squeeze zone indicators. These are Dasan's indicators. <clears throat> so, and they've begun to form. So maybe we've got some support and resistance and, you know, it could be a little more of a calm situation in currency land. That's why I'm pointing all this out in the beginning. So take a look at the dollar. Let's reset this daily chart again. Note we've backed off about a buck from the high. Okay. So this was probably some sort of fib retrace, I would assume, right in his area. Looks like some sort of Fibonacci retracement from probably a much bigger decline, which I don't have the fib retracements overlaid on this chart. It's just too confusing for a lot of people. Just want to keep it real big and basic. Just the three big moving average lines, support resistance, and then um, you know the uh, the candles themselves. I don't have any Bollinger Bands or Keltner channels or anything on this, which just measure uh, some form of stretchness. Should we go out on that? So <clears throat> DXY Euro opposite side of this equation. Now remember, we've been in a big lift off the bottom of last year's pandemic, which we've just passed over, <clears throat> depending on how you view the pandemic for your country, we've just passed over some of the worst uh, anniversary from those days. And, uh, you know, let's, let's look to just know that we were in a very tight range up here. As I talked about on Saturday, we broke down below that range. Now as the dollar is what may have begun, I don't know, you know, it's tough to really prognosticate this stuff. But if you take a look at a weekly chart on the dollar, you can see why I have 85 to 82 is the ultimate um, goal as far as the big movement. I think if we can break underneath this 8850 area, uh, we will probably, I can't say it's going to be this year. It's more of a long term thought, right? When it will come to fruition, how, how fast, how long it lingers. I don't know the answers to any of those questions. I know that, you know, once we break from, back to the daily chart, this area of consolidation, <clears throat> I'm still not 100% seeing why we reversed here, but maybe there's some more signals on the, the weekly chart. Yeah. I guess one could argue that we stopped on the, um, see this cross, by the way, here. <clears throat> signal a little bit of a reversal this was a while ago obviously but i always want to note when these lines are crossing each other because you usually continue to see um they don't have any crosses going on now but pretty much the moving average stopped us on the weekly which could be one area of confluence confluence is just nothing more than a definition of looking more than a few things that are lining up in a given area right support and resistance Price action, which is just the movement of these candles in relation to each other, moving averages, Fibonacci's, you know, waves, Elliott. I mean, there's a bazillion things profiling, right, from both a time and volume perspective. So there's a lot of different things you'd want to look for um, to see all that. Um, but I figured we'd see a rally and then resume the downtrend. If in fact this is actually that drown trends, it's hard to tell. You know, you really don't have clear sailing in my opinion until you break under this 89 area um but and i, I and you know again you know there's always your hope that all software uh, that does uh, have the ability to change from a trending to um, some sort of basing um, or directional bias uh, begins to see that these changes in trend may have taken place right we could just go back down inside this range and trade inside the range for a while, which is fine. So, you know, it's actually easier if we go down slowly back inside the range and then we just go back and forth uh, because it just gives the software in a just a regular non-trending setting the ability to, you know, climb out of any drawdown and or, you know, have uh, just a back and forth, um, which is actually pretty good. 
you want that calmness. You don't want some of these crazy spikes like we've seen in this CAD CHF, which I'm going to next. So that's kind of my analysis on DXY Euro. Moving to the one I've gotten most questions about recently has been CAD anything. <laughs> so, um, but we've, we've settled out. This is the first time um, in the last few days that we formed any kind of support and resistance, albeit this could be short term. Um, I would expect, especially with this doji at the top, I haven't looked at the weekly chart on this, but I would expect at least in the short term uh, for the pain, if you will, of the lift in this trend up, I'll uh, have to be somewhat capped off, right? So I'd feel a little more comfortable. The question is, I just don't know how much we're going to go back down and retrace. I mean, the volume on these moves alone, you can see down here with these volume meters. I mean, we really barbecued a lot of shorts. So I would imagine there's some fairly stungness in institutional land and or you know, whatever Avorians had their software trading this currency in, and it wasn't in a trending mode, you know, have, have gotten eaten on this one. I don't know when it's going to come back down and how much it's going to retrace. I mean, this first level of the 73 area has got to break down below that first. But for now, um, the Dasan squeeze indicators are telling us we've, at least for the short term, established some support uh, and resistance, which could very well be broken on Friday uh, with some of those jobs numbers coming out of Canada. It's possible. So that's just the daily chart. <clears throat> but you know, even though I talk about a lot of this stuff in depth and maybe I go a little too deep and it could be sort of nauseating, um, I want you guys just to begin to see that, you know, when we've been in a balancing period, and I don't care where these lines line up, right, this is a stepped up um, moving average, see how they were higher, 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 uh, we've been, it really is just a portend to potential breakout higher, right? So that break happens, especially in some of these higher volume bars. Even if the software didn't want to shift to trending, I would. All right. So let's, since we're on the CAD discussion, let's take a look at USD CAD. Hasn't had quite the moves, right? We're still in that balance period we've been in for quite some time. Since darn near the beginning of the year. Let's take a look at what else. AUD CAD. Now, obviously, the strength of the Canadian dollars led to the weakness in this particular case, almost across the board. Um, in other currencies, same thing here. This is a little more murky, but ideally, if the software's been trading this um, for on this daily chart, Almost a month it should have been in trend. Month and a half it should have been in trend. Trend down. Draw the lines. Envision them. Let's see. EuroCAD, same thing. Strength of the Canadian weakness, but notice the reversal. If we're getting a bit stretched here, I see a lot of these dojis showing up, these real tight looking candles with not much body to them. It's called a doji. It's an indecision candle. It doesn't necessarily mean we're going to rip back up. The reverse just means that the move could be stalling out, right? Not a lot of dojis in this move down. See that? And we had a couple, which would not necessarily give you any envision that we'd reverse again, but hasn't just been because we're really stretched uh, down on this move. Even though when you look at it, it doesn't seem like it, but we spent a lot of time balancing damn near a year um, and then we broke under it pretty hard. So now it's, it's coming back. So I would think that those in drawdown that were playing the opposite side of this or the software that was continuing to take shorts on the way down, which I would not have wanted to do, um, you should be getting some reprieve on this. <clears throat> so US dollar Swiss daily chart again. So you notice we're stepping down. Support and resistance steps down, steps down, steps down. So you know that if there's any move away from what was almost perfectly a trend line, sort of draw it from this point all the way down right there, that we were going to break this trend. So 
something like that. They don't have to be perfect. But when we break it, it's probably going to be some pain on the way up or on the way down, depending on what's going on. All right, so let's take a look at um, Frank Yen. Still stuck in a long consolidation since the beginning of the year. GBP NZD. Notice we're still st still in the consolidation. Not much going on there. It's the Bitcoin chart, by the way, on the daily. For those that just asked me a question about the Bitcoiner. Not be buying up here. Gold. Actually, let me do spot gold here. It's easier to see. <clears throat> Got a break from this area, 1740. I know in the chat rooms, which I've been monitoring slightly, that they've been talking about trading gold. Just um, make sure that you guys have sort of seen some back testing on that or the developer has signed off or shown you some of the back testing on that to help you um, to help you understand um, whether software works using gold or not. I'm always hesitant. I actually don't actively trade this, uh, even though I may be an investor in it for client accounts. Um, I've never traded this in the futures markets. Um, I've traded a little bit of oil. You know, these two products, uh, at least especially oil, it's called the widow maker for a reason. So, um, you know, there's lots of ETFs I think I'd rather trade or just trade spot. Um, depending on how good the software we has on this, which I probably should know more, a little more about, <clears throat> so forth. Um, what else? I always come back to this DXY chart. I just want to know what's kind of I, I kind of wish we would just start to see like a, a more protracted move. <clears throat> but then again, the risk manager part of me wants to make sure that, you know, Dasan and some of the other developers really got the, I'm um, switching the parts of the software to trending really dialed in and ironed out, you know, before we begin to see some of these bigger currency moves and really it's just probably for the safety of uh, subscribers. He's working hard on it, guys. I had a call with him on Saturday. Yes. Euro GBP. Okay, so, you know, no surprise. <clears throat> Euro's had some strength because it's been all weakness <laughs> for a long time, almost a whole quarter. But you guys can see once this broke, you know, this is actually a really good chart to once it broke, you can see that you really should have been in trending mode almost to now, right? So if you're going to just look back and say, well, when should I have been in trend? Because when this broke, you notice it was just like a pain trade. And then it got to a point where, I don't really see the support here, but maybe it was just the center point of something else. But then the pain trade really started to come in. See that? Then you had a huge reversal. Um, but this was an area to get short, right? Not go long. Does that make sense? And that's 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 trading with the trend. The trend's down, right? So you want to take the spikes back up to the trend line to get short. And this is the case for almost anything that is a mean reverting product that trades in any type of instrument. Okay. So just keep that in mind. This isn't just currency specific stuff. What I'm teaching could be applied to the trading of almost anything. <clears throat> All right. What else? Touch on Euro JPY. Upper range, you're going to need to go to the weekly chart on this. Ultimately, as I mentioned many times before, this 37 ish area, I think is where this is heading. GBP USD. Let's take a look at the daily again. Back inside the range, right? Range is tightened up though. So if we were to break from this tighter range and get below possibly this 100-day line, 
um, we probably could see this area pretty quickly, that whole 3232 area. Pound's been strong, you know, obviously on the, the hope that they're getting the coronavirus right and the hope on there that they're going to have that breaks it all completely, you know, run in this, com this country's GDP at a, at a fabulously growth rate on their own, right? Sort of spinning on their own dime. What else? Yeah, you know, I think that's pretty much it. So we'll go with that. Do note that April 24th, let's just look at the calendar here. So essentially, man, this is only in like less than three weeks. So this is the big Avori event. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys have been following along on this, but you know, where I'm going to be in Tennessee along with all the, the big builders globally and obviously all management and executives and we're going to do some good stuff, some risk management. I'll bore you all to death with my risk management discussions, but I'm going to put a little excitement to it. So I got a few really good stories I'm going to tell um, that really illustrate how important it is to implement risk management, which can apply to every facet of one's life. So with that being said, I will wish you all a great week. Be safe, be kind to each other, <clears throat> say a couple of prayers. This damn pandemic crap's finished because this is really beginning to ball me up and I wish everybody a great week. May the trades be with you. Thank you.